In this video, I modify the spotlights for the LED project. I decided to separate the videos as the construction video is getting a bit long. The project consists of this video along with the construction video, the web page, and other documentation. And I will provide links to those resources in this video. Click on the icon in the upper right hand corner that you see here to go either to the project web page or to the construction video. And for this project, I sourced five different types of LED fixtures, as you see here. Each one of these are a 1 watt LED. And even though I show five different types of LEDs, you only need one set of two to complete the project. I'm just giving you a choice of the LEDs that you may want to use. And again, go to my project webpage to find out where to get those LEDs. The three on the right here, this silver one plus these two black ones, all came with external drivers like you see here. But the LEDs themselves, all they have is the LED device in them. All the drivers are external. So we don't need a driver because we're going to supply our own. So if you buy one of these three, you can use them as is and you just throw the drivers away. Both of these LEDs are a little more unique because they have a knuckle and you can twist the angle and you can also turn it. In both cases with these LEDs they are 12 volt only and they have a current limiting resistor inside of them rather than a driver. These are actually 10 volt LEDs where the other ones were a more typical 3 volt. And while you can use these as is, you can only wire them in parallel, where the other ones you can wire in parallel or series, which just means that you're going to have to be careful when you wire them up. However, this is the driver that we're going to use. It's a driver and a dimmer together. And the problem is, at 12 volts, we're never going to get the full intensity out of these LEDs. So if you don't care about having LEDs not coming to full brightness, because you don't want to have to mess with modifying these, then you can use these as is. However, I recommend modifying them, and it's not really that hard to modify, and that way you'll get full brightness with this dimmer driver. And we'll start with this one because it's a little easier to modify. And in all cases, the bezels of these LEDs just twist off. So we have the bezel, and then we have the lens, and then we can pull the circuit board out and that's probably as far as we need to go. And on the back side there is some goop that you'll want to take off otherwise you're going to get it all over yourself and your tools and your workbench. And this is heat sink compound and this is an aluminum heat sink and all this compound does is it just helps transfer the heat to the barrel. So I'm bringing this up closer and you can see that there is the LED chip and a 51 ohm resistor in series. And to modify this we want to remove the 51 ohm resistor and we want to replace a chip with a 3 volt chip. And that can easily be done. However, I'm just going to replace this whole assembly. And you can buy the LED heat sinks by themselves along with various kinds of LEDs. And these are 3 volt 1 watt LEDs. You can also buy these with the LEDs already on the board. So you don't have to solder these on if you don't want. And the primary reason I'm going with this is that they've actually modified this board. They've cut it under this resistor. And we don't really need to go that route. We're just going to replace the whole assembly. And the glitter of the light doesn't help, but there's three plus marks on this side, three minus marks on this side. So this is a negative side, this is a positive side, and that one in the middle is just for heat transfer. You can see on this LED that the one side has a little minus side marked into it. Of course that goes to the minus side here. And also there are four pads that look identical and then there are two pads that are somewhat offset. Those offset pads are what the LED goes on. So I'm actually going to pre-tin the positive side of the LED pad. I simply hold this on until it heats up enough, solders the LED to the board, and then simply turn it to the minus side and do the same thing here. 
I should caution you that this can get rather hot. Then simply remove the wires from the old one. Put a blob of solder on one of the negative pads on one of the positive pads. Simply slip the wire on the pad, heat the pad until the solder melts and the wire is attached. Then if you have some heat sink compound like this, I just dab a little bit on the back. And then we should be able to feed this back in. And we want this to be able to set flush. Otherwise, when we try to put the lens back on, it's not going to fit. There we go. And we modified this by removing the internal resistor and we changed the 10 volt LED out for the 3 volt LED. And by the way, with this one, the knuckle did not line up properly. So this was cockeyed. And what I ended up doing is having to disassemble everything. And I used a countersink on a little chuck and just countersunk out a little bit like that to clean up the threads a little bit. And then it fit so that now it is parallel. And then I ended up putting a little bit of Loctite on there so that now it won't move. And this second one is slightly more difficult. It disassembles the same. And this LED is a little different because it's square. And it's a 3528 sized LED. And you can't replace this with a standard one because this is too high and when you try to put the lens on it'll stick out maybe a quarter inch too much and you'll never get it back on and it's going to be easier just to remove the two wires to start with and here's a replacement led this is believe it or not a one watt led and when you turn these over you'll see a wide pad and a narrow pad the narrow pad is the ground side or the cathode side and unfortunately the pad on these are underneath the device which makes it a lot more difficult to solder and so I have this ceramic board and I'm going to put this on the board unfortunately you're going to have to have another piece of equipment to do this and I have a inexpensive hot air rework gun which looks like this and here is a typical SMD rework soldering hot air station and they're less than 50 bucks and you can get them on Amazon or eBay. And when I turn this on, it's going to make a lot of noise so you may not hear me, but what I'm going to do, melt the solder for the LED and for the resistor, and then I'm going to put the new LED on. Now when you look at this board, something interesting, the long pad is on this side and the short pad is on this side. The long pad goes to the negative side and the short pad goes to the positive side. So if you consider these LEDs have the short pad going to the cathode, this is mismarked. This should be the plus side and this should be the minus side. Or like what they did is they actually put this LED in backwards. It's hard enough to solder as it is, so we're going to put the on the new LED the wide side and negative side correctly, and then we're going to reverse the polarity here. And a trick I learned is I'm also going to mark the cathode side, which is the short side of the LED, with a little sharpie, because when you turn these around, it's kind of hard to tell which side is which. Now these hot air stations aren't really that expensive, but they can still set you back 40 bucks or more. But I tell you one thing they do work well with is heat shrink. And so we're going to mark this positive here. And we have a silver sharpie and we're just going to erase the old marks. I'm just going to put a little short across here. And what I'm going to use is just a leftover piece of cut off from a lead from a component. And again, you're going to want to use tweezers or something because you can burn yourself otherwise. I will 
use a little bit of ink sink compound. And if you can, you want to get the wires up like that because it just fits a little bit easier. And if we're lucky, this will go all the way back down again. What I like to use is some Loctite. This is a competitor. And if you use Loctite, you know they have a blue and a red version. The blue version is medium. The red is high strength. However, this is low strength. This is a purple, so I like this better. And you want to put some Loctite into the top of the knuckle here and at the base. And you want to do that not only for this one, but also for this one, because they both tend to twist a little bit. And that completes the modification of the LED fixtures. And again, you only have to modify the two knuckle type if you use one of the three that are the three volt fixtures that have the replaceable driver. You don't have to do any modification at all. And while it is possible to use the knuckle LED fixtures not modified, just realize that you will not achieve full brightness and you must wire them in parallel. And while the construction example will show wiring in series, I will also show you how to wire them in parallel if that's the way you want to go.